Hello, that's from Thailand here. And today's video is going to be about Thailand, how it's aiming for the rich. It's aiming at the same high net worth individuals that investment bankers and wealth managers go after. So that's the type of people that Thailand now is trying to attract. Thailand is looking to implement some new proposals with regard to visas and 90 day visas, etc, etc. But I'm going to go into that a little bit later on. But first I'm going to explain as to the reasons why Thailand is doing this. It has to look carefully at its neighbours such as Malaysia, Vietnam and Cambodia and what they're doing to attract new tourists. Now I could go into a big long video and tell you what other countries are doing but I'm just going to use Vietnam as an example. Uh, so Vietnam at the minute are reinventing tourism, how to accelerate the travel recovery. Excuse me, I'm using some notes here because it's a might be a lengthy video and I'd like to refer to my notes so I know everything that I'm saying is correct. So tour, tourism needs to reinvent itself. Vietnam borders have been closed up to 10 months now. And the only people they allow in are uh, experts and diplomats. So the borders have been closed for 10 months now. So this has been a, a massive shock to the tourism industry and their tourism has fell by 80% in Vietnam and hotels are only having an occupancy rate of 30% Vietnam are hoping to recover by 2024 that's if their preparations and planning goes to how they wish it to go to and that's if they implement zero Covid cases that's what they're after um, Vietnam has got strong economic ties to China, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan and 80% of Vietnam's tourists come from these countries so therefore that's the target audience that they're aiming for. At the minute in Vietnam COVID numbers are low so this gives the feeling of confidence for travellers to travel around Vietnam. As of the day of this video Vietnam has in total since COVID began 3,090 cases and out of them 3,090 cases, 35 deaths. Whereas at recording of the video, Thailand has 76,811 COVID cases. And out of that, deaths 336. So as you can see, Vietnam are really, really ahead of the curve with regard to keeping their numbers down. And Thailand has sort of dropped the ball. And from before, their figures were very, very good. Now they dropped the ball. They're fighting to get back them numbers again is why another reason why Thailand has to do what they're going to do. In Vietnam at the present they're heavily into their domestic travel and it's that that's keeping Vietnam alive but the difference in the domestic travel spend and the foreign tourist spend is that the domestic travel in accounts to $61 per head and the foreign tourists are 673 so you can see the huge difference in the amount of spend per tourist in Vietnam is enormous. Vietnam at the minute have strict travel restrictions. Like I said before, experts and diplomats are the only people that are allowed to come in and out of Vietnam. And of course they have a mandatory quarantine. Even experts and diplomats have to go through the quarantine system. They're working at present on a mass vaccination scheme and also a third immunity, which will do good things as far as controlling the, the COVID in Vietnam. They're at present trying to establish travel bubbles with Australia and New Zealand or any other countries that has zero infection rate or very low infection rate. By doing this, this in, encourages tourism again and with strict guidelines and strict rules and regulations with regard to travel bubbles <clears throat> this will start the, the drip feeding of tourists. So what they're doing to encourage domestic travel is five star hotels such as in Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh provide staycation packages. Staycation packages is where people will be upgraded to a suite level in these five star hotels in Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi. They will be picked up by luxury car and chauffeured to their hotels picked up from home so they're making it such a luxurious feeling to be able to be picked up taken to a hotel and pampered basically these are the measures that they're trying to get their 
domestic travellers to make it feel as if it's a special holiday, a special location. They've got deals with cheap food, cheap alcohol and excursions, many of them with these five star hotels. They're working together through all the industry to promote domestic travel because that's the way they're going to get some money for their economy. So like I said, they are reinventing tourism and the, the industry, the leisure industry and travel industry are working hand in hand with the government to try and work, work forward and work ways and where they can improve this and get a, a roadmap for future foreign travellers. So reinventing Vietnam, this is what they're doing. They're trying to get the head of the, head of the game by being able to do this. They're offering the hotels sustainable financial options and hotel revenue pooling. So there's a number of hotels that will pool together and if one hotel does better than the other, as far as revenue is concerned, they will share the revenue out amongst the group of hotels together, therefore helping all the hotels. So this is what Vietnam are doing with regard to improving tourism and trying to get people to visit Vietnam as opposed to Thailand or Laos or Cambodia or South Korea. So getting back onto the theme of the video with regard to Thailand. The in information I've got, I've done some research because I've done another video about some good news in Thailand. Watch the video um, if you want to know what, what that was about. But this is like a, a further development from that video. So like I said right at the very beginning of this video, Thailand is aiming at the high net worth individuals targeted by investment bankers and wealth managers. Now I think that's aiming a little bit too high in my opinion. What they're trying to do is lure all tourists and all retirees to Thailand and we'll go through some of the measures what, what they're trying to do. Um, in 2019 tourism accounted for 18 to 20 percent of GDP in 2019 with 40 million visitors but now the tourist money tree has stopped giving money out and the GDP shrank to 6.7 percent now that's a long way from 18 to 20 percent as, as it was before so this GDP at 6.7 percent was before the March 2020 lockdown so as you can understand now it'll be much much lower so GDP has shrunk even more from March 2020 because of the lockdown and this third lockdown hasn't done the GDP any good whatsoever. So this year will be the worst ever year that the Thai tourism has had with this third wave has been devastating towards the tourism industry. So what are Thailand doing to attract these tourists and retirees and long stay scheme members? So head of the task force is a former head of the JP Morgan Securities Group and he is now the current advisor to the Deputy Prime Minister, the Chief Economic Policy Driver. So in January of this year, Chio Tid quit the private sector JP Morgan to head a, a government task force to facilitate foreign direct investment and promote foreign exchange earnings. So he's, he's the head of this task force now. So he's, he's left JP Morgan, so he's a very, very qualified individual in, in this type of industry and he's given advice to the to the government and he has identified four sectors in which the economical situation of Thailand can improve. But I'm, I'm not going to go through the four sections, I'm just going to concentrate on the one with the tourist section. He said the need for proactive measures for a promotional of Thailand after Covid. So rather than Thailand being a beautiful place for people to come and visit, enjoy the weather, eat some beautiful food, he's after more. His task force is there to attract the high net worth individuals, like I said, some of the wealth managers and investment bankers target. And also targeting the estimated 200 million retirees around the world, living off their pensions or saving. So basically he said he put them into two groups. So the first group would be the pensioners getting their pensions from the government who do not want to do anything just find a nice place to stay, eat some nice food and enjoy the nice weather. That's the first pension group that he's after. Then the second pension group with, uh, and this is a different note, 
because before retirement visas were only granted to people over 50 years old. So the second lot of retirees that he's after is between 45 and 50 year olds who want to still to work and these people would be a plus for the Thailand economy. Starting their own business or sharing their knowledge within Thailand. So new categories of visa will be offered under the new proposal and with new incentives such as relaxing the rules on foreigners ownership of property but of course such deregulation of these rules draw opposition from the Thai bureaucracy but Chaited argues that Covid crisis is on his side which has sparked a global reset in other countries. The crisis helps because our neighbouring countries are deregulating also. Chio Tid said, Vietnam is knocking at the door, Indonesia has woken up, Philippines is warming up. So the main opposition to relax the visa regulations is from the immigration under the politically controlled interior ministry. Chio Tid hopes to do away with the 90 day reporting. Past governments tried and failed to tackle such immigration issues that the time is ripe for change. The people in high places see this also. The new visa package will be announced in the June period. If all goes well to plan, the plan is called the regularity guillotine. So the success or failure of this package could be the bellwether for other guillotine deregulations in the works. It looks like work is in progress to attract foreigners to come and live and stay and make regulations easier in Thailand with regard to retirees and people who want to make investments and people wanting to work. So it's a trickle of information that's coming out. In my last video I said it was going to be announced in May but coming from this it looks like it's going to be put off until June to make all the decisions. Now fingers crossed that this is the good news that everybody's waiting for and everybody's looking forward to. Scrapping of the 90 day reporting would be a huge benefit, even if nothing else changed, but trying to make it easier for retirees to come here. They see the value, I think, now in the retirees and the money that they spend here. And Thailand has to do something. You can't just sit on it behind and watch Vietnam, Malaysia, Laos, Cambodia, Korea, doing all of these things and Thailand does nothing. So Thailand has to make it more attractive for people to come here in the first place. So therefore they have to, to put some measures in to make it more easier. Over the past year or so, there's been a swathe of, of retirees leaving Thailand. The government know this now and I think they realise a the mistake as to what they've done. I think they've shot themselves in the foot with regard to thinking they can do without retirees. Now this was before COVID hit. But once Covid hit, everybody was leaving and everybody's abandoned ship. The whole world has changed. It's going to take a, a long while before everything gets back to normal. So, like I said, fingers crossed that this is the start of a new beginning for Thailand and it makes it easier for foreigners to live here, buy property here, retire here. Let's hope this is the start of the good news following Covid. So from Les, living a dream in Thailand, till the next video, bye for now.